not not a crumb in sight. I don't know how to, what else. What else can you say? Not a crumb in sight. Um. Hello, jean jacket, pog. Um. Denim Dan, denim flannel. I can't. Is that a Roman coin? <laughs> yeah, it is. It is our problem. Um, fizz buff. I have some stuff to share with you. Can I just eat my soup real quick? Is it so crazy for a streamer to go live and then immediately eat a bowl of soup into the mic? <laughs> is that is that bad to do? Is that crazy to do? No, it's normal. All good streamers should do this. I think other streamers that don't do this are shit. Okay, this is what the people want. People want soup into the mic content. It, it differentiates you. You stand out from the pack. That's hot. That's fucking hot. <laughs> God, that's fucking hot. Um, that's a huge bowl. Yeah, I'm a growing boy. I've been working out. I can eat a big bowl of soup. Who are you, my fucking mother? You don't get to tell me how I eat a super nut. Bench F. Atricoin. Atrock, wasn't there a famous Seinfeld episode about soup? Sure. It's not a Seinfeld reference to eat soup. <laughs> what do you fucking tell you? People can eat soup in this world without being a reference to the fucking 90s Seinfeld show. All right, I'm not. Uh, Christ. Yum. Fucking yum, dude. Rasso, rasso, rasso. Thank you for the 23 months. Soup slug, soup slug. Lamau, you're laughing your ass off at that, at your own joke. Calling me a soup slug, you're laughing your ass off. Interesting. Baneri, five. Thank you for the prime. Matt's Will, 0312. Thank you for that tier one. Irrelevance D. Thank you for the two months. Jean EVT. Thank you for the seven months. Um, Lono71, thank you for the 18 months. Uh, Fluffy Tacos, 05, thank you for the five. Banana Man, 1284, thank you for the 24 months. Two years, let's go. You ever played the Batman Arkham games? Bro, real ones know that I have played the Batman Arkham games on stream. It was an amazing time. Everybody enjoyed it. I completed the games 100%. Um, and at the end, I gave a speech that was really, really inspiring to everyone that loved the games. It was like a, it was like a handshake between me and the fans of the games that said, "We are in this together. We both have strong, powerful memories of Arkham games, and we together are true fans." And then I said, "This moment is between us," and I deleted the vods right then and there. And everyone who's a fan of the game knew right then that I was a real one, that I was a true Batman Arkham fan. I was part of the Brotherhood. The fucking blood pact was sealed, and we never had to mention it again. Um, can you farm some more nicknames real quick? The subreddit is dying. Do you think perhaps the subreddit is dying because its only source of content is making a new nickname for me? <laughs> Do you think perhaps if we were to twist that around and it not be just fucking Atriac is the fucking uh, soup slug or whatever, fucking whatever it is, that fucking nickname of the day then we can get some real content in there um just a thought just a thought just denim donkey though how about that one there you go denim donkey you got a new one for you <laughs> denim donkey i have been wearing more denim lately uh okay there's no way i'm gonna be all this soup this soup is too much soup this is not possible i'm gonna put it in the fucking fridge or something Anyway, chat, I have some stories to tell you. In addition to like interesting business and marketing stuff that I'm happy to regale you with, I do think it's a very interesting week. Actually, it's an incredibly interesting week, but we'll get to that in a second. Uh, I went to Riot Games headquarters yesterday, and I took some video and photos in secret that I want to share with you um, of what's going on in that devious place. Um... Did you get them to remove losers queue? Well, I was going to, right? So I, I, I broke into their secret server room. 
I found the hidden door marked loser's queue. And the only person whose name was written on the list was you. <laughs> so I was like, it's not really worth it. I mean, it is real, but it, you're the only one in it. Uh, so I, I, <laughs> I don't know. I just didn't seem like a fucking worth my time. Uh, did you, oh, let's see. Are they making a VR game that will replace real life? They are making a game that will replace real life. It's not VR. It is called the Riot uh, MMO, the League of Legends MMO. <laughs> and that absolutely will replace real life for some of you degenerates. Um, some of you are going to lose. I mean, <laughs> it's, it sounds crazy to say, but some of you listening right now will lose friends, relationships, and family and will have a sadder life because of that game. <laughs> Like, they are developing a drug that will make your life worse, and you are going to pay for it happily. That's going... This is going to happen. This is not even a joke. This will happen. Uh, worth! But you will have, like, a big Garen sword or something. Like a level 80 epic Garen sword. So, uh, it'll be fine. Instruct, genuine question. Would you rather have the death note or $50 billion? Would I rather have financial independence for me and my family and friends for generations? Or would I rather have the ability to kill people? <laughs> you don't deserve it. No, I, I would rather have the fucking money, bro. I don't, <laughs> no, dude. Are you fucking kidding me? I don't want to kill anyone. I would rather, yeah, the, the $50 billion. That's not a tough choice. To be a psycho to want the death note. What gives you the right to write someone's name down and kill them? You're not God. What? what who? <laughs> Extrajudicially murder anyone you want out of... No, no, dude. You guys would abuse it so hard, too. Someone would cut you off on traffic or it would just... You would use it... You would kill people who have... Do not deserve it. Um... Uh, I was driving uh, It's a lot of traffic through LA To get to Riot They're on like the deep deep west side And so I'm driving to get there Me and Ari are in the car And I'm trying to merge lanes right And in LA if you use your signal Like a normal person People speed up to try and stop you <laughs> Even though Even though they are gaining one car slot they were, either I'm in front of you or behind you, but you're losing fucking 0.1 seconds. And so it's, I mean, it's, it's annoying. And I always use my signal. So I flick the light left and I start to merge in. I'm halfway merged in. This guy speeds up, <laughs> cuts around me and honks. Pisses me off. I'm super mad because... I get in, I get in anyway. We're, we're like in standstill traffic, basically. So now he's, one, instead of being one behind me, he's one in front of me. And I'm following him for a long time. And I'm just sitting there thinking, this guy's such an asshole, dude. What, what the fuck is he doing? <laughs> and then I was like, uh, me and Ari are talking about it. And we're like, all right, well, you know what? Maybe he's just having a rough day. Or I don't know, whatever. Because he gave me he gave me that loud fucking honk and sped up around me. It was just, it was just, it was stupid and petty. Right? Maybe he's having a bad day. And so we're, we're going along in traffic. And then... <laughs> because he has that slot and I don't, immediately, like, like a minute later, this huge fucking lifted truck does like the exact same thing to him. Like, pulls in instantly, no signal, almost hits him. <laughs> Right, bro. The guy freaks out, hyper brakes, slams in the horn again. And I'm like, now that dude's extra pissed. Uh... <laughs> and then a third time, another car, no signal, pulls up in front of him and he honks. So this guy has now honked at three different people in the span of, I don't know, eight minutes. And I'm like, I actually, it made me feel so good because I was like, that guy's just in a bad mood. That guy's just having a terrible day. <laughs> You honked at me, but my day is good and your day is terrible. 
Uh, I have had, I give no reprieve to these people. I've had plenty of bad days and never done that bullshit. When you say you give no reprieve, what does that mean? Are you hunting them down extrajudicially and saying your sorries aren't good enough and then pu putting a cap in their head? Like, what What does that mean? <laughs> what, 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 what is, do you just mean like when you're in your car, you stay frustrated? What, what are you doing to them that you're giving them no reprieve? Because, um, what my giving them reprieve is really giving myself reprieve to not care. Do you understand? That's the benefit of it. It's like, oh, okay, fine. If I imagine him as having a rough day, then it's like, <laughs> then I don't care. If I imagine him as like a symbol that everyone on the road is an asshole out to get me, then I am more angry, I'm more anxious. Mm. Lil bro is soup boy acting like we ain't gonna notice. I, I fully expect you to notice when I eat a giant bowl of soup into the mic. Um, uh, just the mindset of, wow, he is completely miserable and in a rush to get home to have an argument with his wife. <laughs> That's good, too. No, I mean, I'm not saying I didn't have some... Fucking Schadenfreude from seeing the guy get fucking honked at and cut off twice. All right, that was like great. I was like, you know what? He's now he's even in a worse mood. Um, um, mm. Do you know that glizzyhands.com redirects you to your stream? I didn't know that. Thank you so much for that really, really cool piece of information. I need to make it a little colder in here because I'm not taking off this jacket. This jacket's fly as hell, <laughs> but it's also got a hot in this room. Probably because of the soup. One second. Coffee, coffee cow. Oh, you know what? Let me get a freezer shirt ready. Let me get a freezer shirt ready for after I'm done talking. It's not a bad idea. What kind of soup is it? A classy and classic chicken noodle. All right. Like, oh, yeah. Freshly made. Are you sick? No. Sick of your questions. <laughs> uh... Would you rather have an unlimited uh, lifetime supply of Chipotle or $100,000 right now? That's an interesting question. That's an interesting question. 100K is probably, I mean, it's almost certainly the right answer, but I eat a lot of Chipotle. Does it, does the, does it include Uber Eats fees? So let's say I, I have unlimited Chipotle. Can I order it on my phone? If it does, then yeah, easily. I'll take the Chipotle. <laughs> I mean, I'm on pace, dude. I'm on pace. I think I've spent $10,000 in total on Chipotle delivery. Uh, uh, easily. Easily, easily, easily. Give me the rest of my life. I'll eat Chipotle. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Uh, it's like, yeah. But what you basically said is as long as you like Chipotle... You've got unlimited food. 
unlimited food, dude. That's 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 a hundred thousand dollars. You something could happen. You know, you could invest it in something that loses value, or whatever. I mean, it's just but guaranteed food forever. Uh, what if Chipotle goes under? I guess theoretically Chipotle could go out of business, especially if they're serving me free food. <laughs> Can I order for my friends? Can I just start, can I really fucking milk this? Can I uh Can I just like start Can I you know what I'm saying like Can uh get, you know, I can't solve world hunger cuz I'm assuming the Chipotle is not free for them, it's free for me. It's like some kind of loophole where they are taking out of their profits my Chipotle. <laughs> Uh, so I can't, I can't like just make a, a hundred million Chipotle stores free. Uh, plus I always get the guac. I mean, I, I can like, I can get all the guac now. I can get double meat every time. Just resell the burritos. Isn't that kind of a sad way to. What do you mean resell the burrito? Like I'm gonna I'm gonna go into a Chipotle, use my free card to get a bunch of free burritos, and then sit out front with a tray, reselling burritos. That <laughs> it just doesn't. It just seems stupid, right? It just seems like a bad. Who who would buy? Who goes to Chipotle? I mean, I have to really mark them down and then it'd be spooky. Let's say you walk to Chipotle and then you see a guy out front in a cool jean jacket <laughs> offering $1 burritos. Do you buy? Are you are you worried or you just keep going into Chipotle and get... They're mystery burritos. At what point does the money become more valuable than Chipotle to you? I mean, the real answer is the money, bro, right? Even if I really love Chipotle, I was joking. But $100,000, you could take $20,000 and have Chipotle like anytime you want. And then you have 80 grand you could put into the market. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Realistically, there's you're not spending that much on Chipotle that it would... Uh... uh... The guac is really expensive. It is. The guac is such a crazy markup. Two dollar. This it's a one little slab of guac. It doesn't. It doesn't feel like the guac is that much more than the other ingredients that they don't charge you for. Um, I know avocados are expensive, but it just feels like they. They really. It's what they do is they farm the millennial. It's millennial farming is what it is because we love avocados. And they know that they can really milk us on that. Uh, it's a millennial tax. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what is the unluckiest man on earth? Well, I'm doing marketing money today. This might not be. Let's see. Yeah, I will, I will check this out. Unluckiest man on earth. Hey, Drake, I used to work there because it takes so much time to do in the mornings. Wait, what do you mean? To, to mash the avocado and make the guac? That's that's why they charge $2 for it? Fine, whatever. I'm not, listen, I'm, I'm still buying it. Um, hey, Drake, the <laughs> how much does it cost to buy Chipotle? Can you put the 100K towards building one yourself and get free Chipotle? If you take $100,000, which is not enough, by the way, towards building a Chipotle franchise and then use it to give yourself gratuitous amounts of free Chipotle, that is the least efficient way to buy meat and tortillas <laughs> to make yourself food. Do you understand? that you're, You are just cutting into your own bottom line and you've spent all of the money on the, the employees and the space and the, and the franchise rights. That that is that is so stupid. 
Uh, it's not passive income. It's extremely active. <laughs> extremely active. People who own single franchises are not raking it in. Don't. <laughs> the fucking moneyed elite that own a single Chipotle or McDonald's or they, those guys bust their ass to make. I don't know, probably probably 100 grand a year is what they net, I guess. Um, it's the people that own like 50 is where they're starting raking it in and they have a manager to manage the managers. Um, way more than 100K? No, it's not way more than 100K. Noah for Pope. <laughs> it's not. If you own one franchise, they don't net that much. Uh... There is no guy that is clearing, who's clearing two million on one store. What are you talking about? It's, it, it, these, these industries are thin margins. Yeah, thin, 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 thin. Uh, but you would want a Wetzel's? Yeah, because Wetzel's, low upfront cost, high ROI. They, they, it'll pay for itself in like three and a half years and then it's all profit. Hmm. I just looked it up. Profits are about 50 to 150K a year. Interesting. And not exactly what I said, but there was some guy in chat who claimed I was dead wrong. <laughs> That's interesting. I'm so, I'm just confused because usually chat's always right about this stuff. Uh, hey, truck. Um, so I take all the money and make it back in a year. If you... No. What? No. <laughs> No. Uh, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. It's kind of hot, dude. No, no, no. No, if it's a really good franchise, you'll make your money back in a few years. But you have to run it well. Do you understand? And you have to hire people that are good. And you have to also be in, in the, you know, it's a little bit of luck because some franchises, just because of larger consumer tastes, fall out of favor. You know, there's a lot of people that jumped on the franchise trend for um, frozen yogurt. <laughs> Remember that? Frozen yogurt, um, you know, boba places. They jump in and then they uh, they saturate the market and the consumer tastes change. People don't want that stuff anymore. And then you're stuck. Um Boba, yeah, Boba, Boba is probably the more recent example, but like if you're getting into Boba now, just recognize that you're doing the same thing as the frozen yogurt guys did, which is like jumping on a trend, hoping the trend stays, consumer tests don't change. And if they do, you're kind of, you're, you know, you better, better have a fucking backup plan. Um, do, 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 do. Uh oh. What's up? Call me Mr. Mouse. The benchmark for success for the average restaurant is you pay back your debts in three years. Yeah, exactly. About three years. And that's good. That's awesome. <laughs> then all of a sudden you're 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 clearing some money and you start to expand, try to get more than one. That's the dream. Um after that it's infinite Chipotle for me. Listen, if you own a Chipotle, you can get Chipotle meals for cheap <laughs> for free i guess like but it comes out of your own bottom line it's like it's like you're opening a lemonade stand and then drinking the lemonade you're like i found a fucking hack <laughs> it's like no you bought the lemons you bought the sugar you put it together and now you're drinking it it's not it's not a hack dude every everything comes back to your bottom line <laughs> uh Just eat the leftovers from the customers. Now we're talking. If you are a Chipotle owner who sips sips through the garbage <laughs> or, you know, cleans up the tables by grabbing the burritos and finishing them, all of a sudden, okay, less waste, um, free food for you. Now we're talking. That's Grussell. That's you maximizing every profit. No beans wasted. I think that now we're talking. Um, the owner just walking around asking, are you going to finish that? 
<laughs> uh, yeah, that's hype. Now we now we're getting on the same page here. I, I see where you guys are going with this. Um, the goat pizza chain. I don't know if I really like any of the pizza chains. I used to be a Domino's Daryl, like in college, but listen, I mean, like the, you know, one benefit of living in a city is like, especially a big city, like there's going to be some non-chain pizza you can get. Uh, only thing I fucking hate is, is uh, Papa John's. Oh, I call Papa John's Diarrhea John's and I hate to be crass. <laughs> Papa John's is nasty, bro. Nasty, nasty, nasty. Trash. Trash, trash, trash pizza. Um, hungry Howie's cut crust is goaded. Yeah. I used to get Hungry Howie's. Uh, in high school, we would all split. We would all buy one full Hungry Howie's large, and we would split it at lunch. Because you could go off campus. It was kind of based. Oh, I remember... <laughs> We had this dude named uh, Taylor, actually. I think I've told other stories about Taylor. And we all pooled our money, which was like 20 bucks. And we gave it to him to go get two large Hungry Howie's pizzas. And we should have had like, I don't know. I don't remember. It was like, you know, like $5 change, right? Well, th there was a cute girl that he liked that was working there. And then for some reason, he came back with one like medium sized pizza and no change. <laughs> All of the money was gone. And and and, and he said unironically he doesn't know what happened. <laughs> he didn't like <laughs> He's like, I don't know. I don't I don't understand. Uh it's not like a major hilarious story or anything, but we made fun of him for that for like four years. Like we still making fun of the day. I just hung out with those guys back in Arizona. We still tell that story. I don't know. It's not even that big of a story. We still tell that story all the time. It's just one of those stories that fucking runs. Uh uh, I get a table at a pizza place and I make a microwave pizza in front of them. <laughs> your, your Russell's insane. You sit down at a pizza hut <laughs> with a little microwave of your own and you say, oh, I just came for the table. <laughs> uh, did he get the girl? No, he didn't. He didn't get the girl. Although, not to disrespect uh, this girl or the situation, but that girl, um, and you know, it's been a long time, I'm sure, <laughs> but she I had to give a speech to the whole school at the end of the year. She was like, not valedictorian, but something like that. And, um, a, a, one of the students had committed suicide that year and she like did a moment of silence, but then giggled and it was bad. It, everyone was mad. And I think she was just nervous with, with hindsight. You know what I'm saying? I was part, cause I knew that guy and I was really mad at her. But now that it's been many years, I'm like, you know what? I don't think she was like the spawn of Satan. I think she was nervous <laughs> because you know, it was, a, it was, she was fucking young to be giving such a speech. Uh, but I, at the time, everybody was mad at her. I mean, she got, it was a real drama moment. Why is she laughing about suicide? Little bro, it's not your problem to be. <laughs> you know, she she's she's served her time. Okay? Stupid shovel. You don't need to be fucking hunting her down. And uh she it was I'm sure it was very tough for her after that. I mean, parents were mad. Uh, this was like fucking 15 years ago, too. Uh um. <laughs> Oh my God, I left half hour ago to avoid listening to him slurp, slurp soup and he's still slurping it. <laughs> I'm sorry that I enjoy the delicious soup that my wife made for me. Oh, lock me up. Throw away the key. Put him in the gallows, dude. He likes to eat the soup that his wife made him for dinner. He doesn't want to eat it cold later. He wants to eat it while it's hot. Oh no. What a devil, dude. Ah. <laughs> Bro, ass. 
Then start stream later. I can't because I committed. I committed to seven. I said I, my title was 731 come hell or high water. <laughs> so I didn't have a lot of flexibility. I couldn't like push it back 20 minutes and eat my soup. I had to go live and that was right when Ari delivered me the soup. Okay. You see how I'm put in these situations. I'm thrust into these problems and I have to fucking find solutions on the fly. Neurons crackling. Um... All right, let me get like two more bites and I'll just put it away. I'm not even that hungry anymore. Let me get two more bites. All right. <laughs> Don't count the bites. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm gonna put this back. I'm gonna put this back. And I'll be back here. Fucking amped up, dude. I'm ready to kick some ass by reading a PowerPoint about business stuff. <laughs> uh, you know, I ate a lot of bites. I don't give a shit. Why the fuck is this? Oh, what? Bad husband won't eat his wife's soup. <laughs> Either way, you guys are mad at me. That's funny. That's funny. That's a hoot. I said, I told her. I, when I went out there, I was like, hey, babe, this soup fucking rocks. And she said, oh, thanks. So how about that? All right, now let me show you guys what I was doing yesterday. Uh, because I took a visit to one Riot Games headquarters. Let me send these videos to myself. Da, 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 da. Send in these videos to myself. And basically my takeaway, if I had to have a takeaway from this trip to Riot Games for a little after hours dinner and gaming is that, um, and I hate to say this, I don't even want to say this. This is like not something I want to say. Wait, let me just. Um, how far up did you roll the cuffs? What do you mean by that? My, they're not rolled up at all. What are you, uh, lame. <laughs> I don't think you you shouldn't roll up the cuffs on a jacket. <laughs> no, I mean maybe on like a when I when I wear flannel I'll roll it. I'm not. No, I'm not gonna roll up. <laughs> no. Uh, show off that roly. <laughs> not a roly. Uh, Lil Bro's jacket is made out of pants. I can't. All right, guys. I, I <laughs> Do you want me to tell you you're funny? Is that gonna make it better? Is that what you're looking for? You're funny. Okay, everyone thinks you're funny. <laughs> You don't gotta impress anybody, okay? Nobody, everything you see doesn't have to be a launch pad for a joke, right? We get it, you're funny. You guys are really funny. Every one of you, it's like one of the funniest people I've ever met. It's crazy. Um, this, 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 and this. Send, send the fucking videos, please. Um, Uh, yeah, we'll do Marketing Monday here in just a minute, so, uh, you know, don't worry about that. But uh, I want to tell you about Riot. So I go to Riot, uh, I got some friends there, and I want to hang out. Oh, well, yeah. Um, and uh, I want to hang out, and we're going to play some games, and we're going to play Melee, and play some Magic, and whatever. And I have been to the Riot campus before, but it was way earlier, and it was smaller. I haven't been to Riot 
since maybe the beginning of the pandemic or earlier. And what I want to say is, and I want to give you guys a video for this fucking reveal. Um, let's see. Riot's a grower, not a shower. Are you comparing Riot Games to a flaccid penis? To make what point? <laughs> what is your what is your larger point and and or goal um, when you say that? Did you get a haircut? I did not. Um, okay, my point is to tell you that Riot Games. Here it is. 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 Mm -hmm. Still me chewing. <laughs> Chewing into the mic even on this video. As Riot Games is, if you are a young person right now looking to work in tech or games, I can't think of a more fun looking place. <laughs> I used to think Twitch in 2014 was the absolute peak. Uh, this, this was not a workplace, bro. This was like a fucking... Um, gigantic dream gaming dorm um this room is like every tv with every fucking console on display and all these old games and uh free snacks over here and free drinks and and there's a kitchen of free shit and uh what is this dr dr mundo's operation mundo's operation <laughs> and then watch this i pan up it's a fucking <laughs> Like super sick cyberpunk Korean themed PC cafe. <laughs> this is like fucking 9 p.m. at night, and it's just a bunch of people playing fucking Valorant and TFT and shit, eating free snacks. It's insane. This is a little thing show stream. Uh, and then over here is an arcade, <laughs> and this goes deep. <laughs> this is an arcade. There's like all these fucking classic games for free. There's an arcade over uh, here. There's a bunch of old ass boomer games <laughs> for a zoomer like me. <laughs> Everything's got like a. <laughs> anyway, oh yeah, and then this. I found that they fucking uh, named a conference room after me. I found that they obviously knew that the goat would be in town, and so they created this whole fucking floor to ceiling conference room just for me, and no one was in it because there's only only I was allowed in. Um, yeah, they saw my guide. Look at the reference to my guide back there. So I saw that. I left a secret message inside that room. If you're an employee of Riot, you'll find it one day. <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't know, there's just a bunch of old fucking, you know, games and shit. But it was all playable, which was cool. Um, they had all the games for... Oh, and then, like, outside? So it really is a full fucking college campus. <laughs> just... There's This is the Riot basketball court on the quad. And the fucking employees called it the quad. <laughs> it's like, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Um... And there's like a cafeteria. Oh, dude. And everything's fucking like Discord named. So it was like, instead of getting pizza, it would be like, go in line for Riot Noms. <laughs> it's like, get your noms on. And, uh, but it was like good quality stuff. All the food was good. And there's free LaCroix. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, I mean, overall, like, I, 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 what, what it really is, is like, you know, when you move across the country or move states or move somewhere to a new city for a new job, there's that thing where you have to like find friends in the city and, you know, build up your network and like get to know people. And what that job and like what Twitch offered me in 2014 is like culture in a box. <laughs> it's like, they just put it all on campus so you can like make friends with other people with similar interests. It like makes it really easy. Um, and so I, if you are like a young gamer, 
I I can just I have to I have to recommend what I saw on that campus because it was cool. It was like very like there was a lot of people clearly hanging out doing interesting stuff. Um. Um. But for all of you that are furiously uh, tabbing over to look at Riot Games jobs, <laughs> I think they're like hiring freeze right now. <laughs> Much like all game companies, I mean Twitch is just mad layoffs. I think uh, it's not like a good time for it. I'm just telling you that like, you know, I I have to give cred where credit is due because that that campus is like one of the best I've seen, and it just felt more focused on gamers than like the Google campus, which I've been to, which is nice, but like. Um, just generic bougie SF style stuff. Um, you've been Twitch layoffs tonight? I am. I am having Twitch layoffs. Uh, did you hear about the Google? I mean, everyone's doing layoffs, bro. It's layoffs central. Um, can I work there if I've been banned from league? I don't know, but I do remember that I thought the same question. <laughs> I was worried that they were going to check my chat history when I applied at Riot back in like right after I graduated. And so I like played 20 games in a row where I was like overtly nice. <laughs> I just kept saying like, hey, good job team. Great job. I was just trying to like push that shit back more in the history. <laughs> Pretty, you know, in, in hindsight, a waste of time. Like that I could have been prepping more for the interview or something, but I just thought that would be, 20 games of League of Legends is not a great way to prep. Um, do, 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 do. How would they know it's your account? You put it, you you let them know. They, they especially at the time, Riot used to have this policy of like they really wanted to hire people that played the game, um, which is limiting uh, for certain roles. Uh, and I think they've they've backed away from it. But at the time, they were really into that. Um, uh. You won those games though, right? I don't remember. I don't remember. Probably not. <laughs> uh, are you sure you should be wearing a denim jacket and jorts? I'm not wearing jorts. <laughs> I'm wearing fucking khaki full length pants. Uh, have you. There's a new League Cinematic? I don't want to show for Riot today. I already gave them props on their campus, bro. I'm not going to watch their cinematic for free. Um, why aren't you wearing jorts? I wear pants over jorts, over a smaller set of jorts, over underwear. That way I always feel protected. You understand? Uh... It's really good. Fuck it. New Riot Cin or watch the Riot Cinematic. We'll watch uh, Isto's video and then I'll jump right in to the marketing Monday. 20 hours ago, League of Legends, season 2024 cinematic. Let's see what they got since I visited the campus and all. By the way, went 3-0, Magic Drafting. There were some good players there. Cleaned up, dude. I'm actually just so nasty at Magic. It's crazy, dude. I wish the games that I really liked were streamable. I gotta fucking play games that... <laughs> uh, uh, what did you draft? I draft. It was a power cube, if anyone knows that. <laughs> and I drafted mono white land destruction. So I had a bunch of like one cost creatures and then on turn four I would blow up all lands in the game. <laughs> it was sick. It was fucking hype. It was so hype. And all of them had these fucking nerdy ass control decks with black lotus and shit. And then I would just. Poosh, poosh. Uh, so you made zero friends that night? <laughs> uh, I think they thought it was cool when every time on turn four I would go, kaboom! And then I would wipe their lands off the table. <laughs> I would reach over and push them off the table, pick them up. Uh, I thought that was cool. I think I made a lot of friends. Uh, all right, let's see this fucking thing. Tomorrow is a hope. By the way, everyone in chat, I don't know if you guys know, Tier Zoo is in chat. He's been working on like a lot of sick new videos. Like he did that really, really, really high production value uh, saber tooth tiger versus velociraptor video. Uh, it's pretty sick. He has promised me over DMs. 
that he is going to single-handedly fix my YouTube channel, okay? He's gonna do all the work. <laughs> He's putting me in a Discord channel that's gonna just fix all the problems and make sure that I have great, high-quality videos every single day. So if it doesn't happen, blame him. Do not blame me, because I have already pawned him off. So that's on Tier Zoo. Let's see. Never a promise. <laughs> uh, joking. I hope he's not. <laughs> anyway, let's see. Okay, we got some shit happening. Can I say something? Riot Games, years ago, lapped the entire rest of the industry when it comes to music. But now it's been so many years, why the fuck is nobody else catching up? <laughs> why is nobody else catching up? <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? What it, uh, now? Now it feels like <laughs> I understand when they innovated and was like, "Whoa, what the fuck?" People actually like this. It makes it more culturally relevant. Gaming is not just a fucking nerdy thing. It's becoming more popular. Everyone does it now. Like they're getting, they're fusing gaming and culture and music. But now other people like Blizzard, step your fucking game up. Uh. Is this a new champ? Am I, am I, is this Kale? Is this Morgana? Are these like wings? What? What is this? When did Mor Morgana doesn't look like this? That's... When did she go woke? <laughs> Why does she have dyed wings? You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry, but I can't like... This is not... <laughs> Always CC. <laughs> oh, don't cross the line, motherfucker. Don't cross the line. Predictable. This would be a perfect time for like shark <laughs> and then Fizz like bounces in and like knocks everyone out and there's like a big tidal wave. I just feel like it would add a little more gravitas to this is you know what I'm saying? This has never been in the cinematic, I think. Which is kind of cringe. Stay dead, Trent. <laughs> Nobody likes you.
shit. So it's basically Five Nights at Freddy's? Yeah, basically. You're getting it. Kendra is a cool champ, cool design. Trigamir is a cringe champ. Pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool. Excited for Arcane 2. Looks cool. I mean, you know, it's just, it would be really fun to take that cinematic and then cut it in with like actual league gameplay of you getting called a slur because you missed a CS or something <laughs> by, by your support, you know? You just like cut it back and forth. <laughs> of like fail flashing over the wall and then your fucking jungler goes AFK or... Uh, Still here is a is a fun tagline for a game trying to stay relevant. League of Legends is still relevant, bro. Biggest esport in the world last year. It's only dying in NA because uh, everyone's found even more toxic games. <laughs> League's still huge in Asia. Uh... uh and, and Europe, actually. Just really, NA is where League is kind of dying. LCS viewership down bad. Yeah, LCS is dead, because who the fuck wants to watch... <laughs> like, LCS fucking clown show that we know is going to get stomped at Worlds with fucking random-ass games of teams that I don't care about. By the way, like, none of the teams are even homegrown NA talent. It's like they import, you know... <laughs> washed up players from other regions in order to like win trade back and forth then lose in worlds it's like not uh did do better did do better than europe i can't and also i'm very excited for mark z to be commissioner maybe they'll turn this all around i'm just saying in general that's why people burned out on na i think um uh, i think that's the general reason hey big a today at Soccer practice. Wait, you threw up or something? Uh, I'm going to start watching Arcane because you said it's good. And if that makes me get into League, you're responsible for the downfall of my life. Okay, whatever. <laughs> good luck, bitch. <laughs> Don't fucking lose lane. Don't fucking lose lane, brother. You're going to have a bad time. If you, <laughs> better, fucking, <laughs> better fucking hit that CS. Get practicing. If you're going to do it, do it right. Uh... Arcane actually got me into league. Yeah, a lot of people did. It's the the pipeline is real. Um, for all that stuff. I mean, the Last of Us show got people to buy Last of Us. Game companies are figuring out that they're just becoming media companies because it works both ways. The games sell the TV. The TV sell the games. All of them sell merch. Everyone's figuring out what Disney figured out fucking twenty years ago, thirty years, forty, sixty years ago. <laughs> Everyone's figuring it out. Okay, and then they're all trying to fucking become their new Disney's. Um, uh, did you see Mark Zuckerberg's Hawaii Ranch? Yeah, I included it. It's all included. Uh, I'm shocked Disney doesn't do more gaming stuff. They're trying. They're trying. They realized a little late that gaming is the future and every kid wants to fucking play games. So they're trying. I mean, they did do Skylanders and shit. Uh, but they, they're trying to become... They're trying. They're trying, dude. Um, My math teacher was top 10 in the world in 2012 in league. <laughs> I, well, in the world, I don't believe. I think your math teacher's lying, unless you live in Korea. 
I don't. I just don't believe him. If he's top ten in NA, I probably do believe him, because that's about when I was top twenty one. <laughs> uh, it was totally possible back then if you were a grinder and and you just grinded NA. Uh, but now I am bad and a streamer, and he is probably bad and a math teacher, and so we both lost our our chance at LCS. Um. <laughs> Um, top 21, bro, just say 21st. <laughs> I only said, I have it as top, I have it as 18th, okay, is what I was. But I say top 21 because the only screenshot I had was me right behind fucking Scara, and I was 21st, all right? Yeah, so fine, top 21, whatever, fine. <laughs> fine, 21, still pretty good, still pretty good, okay? Uh... Did you see Faker pop off at the LCK opening? No. Like there was a game? Hello. No, I didn't see it. Uh It was a show game? Okay. Uh I'm more of a playoffs Andy, but I am going to watch highlights. I don't, I'm not going to stay up for Korean games on a regular day. Oh, they did show matches. I got you. Okay. Um, let me get a timer going here because I already want to start marketing Monday here in a second. Let me make sure I got my shit too. Uh, anyway, yeah, Riot Campus, uh, unironically, uh, as much as I didn't want it to be amazing, was probably the coolest for someone like me, for like a gamer, probably the coolest workplace I've seen. And that beats early Twitch, which I thought was unbeatable. The Twitch PC cafe was like rinky dink compared to that. Um... Why did you want it to be bad? No, I just, you know, you don't want to give credit to any companies. Yo, Big A, do you ever think Tencent would sell Riot if you offered them a trillion dollars? <laughs> yeah, I mean, at the right price, anyone will sell anything, right? But they're, no, I don't think they will. They they love owning the IP. The IP is huge, Riot's growing. It's a big global company, makes games everywhere. Why would they ever sell it? Why would they... Uh... <laughs> <sighs> Um, she Brandon on my A tree until I awk. All right, about time to put that timer on and get ready to go. Uh, let me make sure that I got everything that I need in this slide. Yeah, 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 yep. Yeah. Okay, all oh, this seems good. And then I go over to this. <laughs> um Okay. Um wait. Just hold up one second. This is going to be good. One second. One second. Hold up. Screenshot. Everyone just introduce yourselves to each other. <laughs> you know? Everyone go around the room and say one fun fact about themselves while I make sure uh, that this works. There it is. Okay. Got it, 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 got it. Okay. Um just need one more funny little screenshot here to round this all out. And then you guys will get a pretty nifty update. 
on what's going on in the world. Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, hmm. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready to start here. So, uh, without further ado, let's run a quick ad. And then I'm going to fucking jump into it, okay? Uh, and we're going to find out what's going on in the world. Uh, ad song. Get it out of the way so it doesn't pop up. Oh, it's still vid. Okay. It's still vid then. It's still vid. And then. And then. It's feeding time for Daddy Bezos. Sacrifice the poor and unsubscribe. While they watch their advertisements. We'll kill some time and pretend to care that they can't see Wait, this. there's a bunch of fun stuff. God, they're suckers. They all forgot to sub again. Streamers. Wait, the Reddit's got a bunch of fun stuff money, on it. So cough it up, because they're our friends. Sorry. Rent's not even that expensive. Student debt's not a financial drain. There's no excuse for not subscribing, which is a crime much worse than murder. Oh, by the way, I yoinked this. I actually yoinked <laughs> I'll just tell you. All right. So when I used to work at Twitch and people would come visit, they would yoink some of the free snacks from the kitchen. <laughs> well, I did a little bit of that in Ari's purse <laughs> and she didn't even know about it. <laughs> she didn't even know about it. I was, I was just yoink, drop it in her purse. Dude, I got a bunch of shit. Riot Games, this is for all the fucking skins I bought that you overcharged me for. Do not call the Atlanta PD. Do not call the Atlanta PD. Okay, 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 okay. It's not fucking coke. It is blowing my nose when I'm talking. Uh, the song unironically reminded me to make my student loan payment. <laughs> uh, we got it. Wait till my predictions, bro. We got to talk about student loans. I've been reading a lot about student loans, bro. None of you are making your fucking payments. <laughs> you guys aren't making your payments. Holy moly, you guys are not making your payments, bro. Straight up, you're not doing it. You're, you guys are skipping. Ooh, we gotta talk about it. Uh, uh. 16th? No, I think it's the 17th. Well, I believe my prediction stream will be one week from today. I believe that is the case. But it's it's going to be exactly one year from the last prediction. So whenever that was. Uh, anyway, I've been working on it every day. I feel good about it. Okay, guys, without further ado, I'm going to check out the Reddit real quick. And then we're going to jump into Marketing Monday. Uh, there's a lot of things in the Reddit that I want to see. It'll be very quick. This will be a quick Reddit download. Because um, a lot of them are stupid. Like, go ahead and get your glizzy on. <laughs> which I already got tagged in like 50 times on Twitter, okay? This is not, this is not, I don't need this. Um, there's a guy saying glizz up as he's eating a hot, Costco hot dog. It's amazing. There's a guy drawing. That's pretty good. That's actually pretty sick. There's happy part of the Glaze Trioc fan base, and it's just my face on Fizz, which I guess is fine. I'll give it enough. <laughs> there's Itchrock's famous week of eight off, 10 out of 10 straight on the partner. I think the story I told about Rudolph Hess was actually fascinating yesterday. And I think if you didn't see it, you should go listen to it because it's one of the most interesting stories about World War II I've ever heard. Okay? 
I think it's fascinating. Um, uh, this is a real Instagram account of a Chinese silverware factory where the boss posts how good or bad her employees perform. Like she walks around and <laughs> it's actually that's actually kind of hype. I should do that with my editors, bro. Um, something killed Neg Neg Atrioc animated clip of you killing Neg Neg from a Spectacor's perspective. Wait, let me see this. No, you're right. You're right. right He's probably just scared about new. something. Hey, well, you can stop. you can hit people with that. Oh yeah? Oh, really? No. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> ow! Ow! <laughs> A spectacle. <laughs> A spectacle! <laughs> Something killed Neg Neg! That's so psychotic! <laughs> <laughs> Who did that? That's amazing! Wait, uh, that is TJT Lee? Bro, that's fucking Heath! That should have like a million of us way better than fucking uh, get your gliz on. Thank you for making that. That's am If you ever want to work, if you ever want to work with us at the, the YouTube team, Reach out, dude. We could always use that in a video. A marketing Monday could use it. We can always use animation anytime. A Hitman video could use it, dude. Anytime. Uh, would love, love to pay you money and work with you. And with that. Um, okay, that's all. Rest of it is all glizzy. So remember, Big A Wards uh, this Saturday at 6 p.m. Oh, there's my fizz guide. Too wholesome, I can't. And it's from 10 years ago. Bojangles the Craze said, this is the best Fizz guide I've ever seen. <laughs> Atriox's ultimate guide to Fizz is phenomenal. I can't believe it hasn't been posted before, but anyway, here it is. Thank you, Bojangles the Craze. You actually got me a lot of traffic. It was great. It's actually hit number one on our summoner school. Uh, full image? What? What's the full image? Uh, I would highly recommend this guide to anyone thinking of picking up Fizz. I had no interest in playing the fish till I saw this guide. And you know what? It still holds up today. Oh, what did I say? Hi, guys. Really glad you seem to like the guide. It holds a special place in my heart. It took a ton of time to make. I had to teach myself the CSS, HTML, and video editing from scratch. And I played Fizz at Diamond 1. Diamond 1, by the way, was the highest back then. There didn't have Challenger. Uh, Non-stop for like a month to make sure what I was saying was useful and true. Uh, I really want to update it for season four, but uh, I actually got a job at Twitch where I'm now working full time. <laughs> uh, if you want to see the fizz in action, wait, did I say <laughs> I, I said, in part due to some of the connections I made from the guide himself? That's fucking lie. <laughs> no shot did this guide help me get hired at Twitch. I tell you that right now. That's a fucking dead lie. That didn't happen one iota. Uh, no shots. No, no way. Uh, anyway, all right, well, cool. Yeah, it's very wholesome. Uh, it was, I mean, I, I, I will say, I mean, <laughs> I don't know how I can make this understandable. I, getting that job at Twitch when I was fucking struggling to make League of Legends content for paying by the word for Machinima and for Team Liquid was like the biggest come up I'd ever had. And I ran around my house celebrating and like it was like the happiest moment of my life probably. Of my whole life, that, which is like kind of sad because like just getting a job, but it was like the biggest fucking uh, come up that I ever had. Uh, I'm married. You know what's funny? And I'm just being dead honest. You know, we dated for a very long time. Obviously my wedding's a beautiful day, but like, I had never had any uncertainty that I was going to spend the rest of my life with Ari. <laughs> We've been dating for a very long time. I love that woman. So like the wedding day is almost to me like a really beautiful capstone to a, a, a you know, a relationship. Like we, you know what I'm saying? But I, I had so much uncertainty over whether or not I'd be able to like make any money. <laughs> 
uh like have a have a stability uh no don't tell me don't fuck with this. i'm saying exactly what i mean i'm telling you exactly what i mean don't try to fucking you guys are, wait wait what am i gonna say shut the fuck up you parasocial freaks no <laughs> you think my wife's gonna walk in here and go no what <laughs> you were happy you were so happy you got your job shut the fuck up little bro i'm being for real Okay, I was stressed. I was stressed every day that I wasn't gonna be able to get like a fucking job in the industry I wanted to work in. And my dad was yelling at me, and I was like, "You better go fucking work at Costco, buddy." Um, and I finally got that job at Twitch, and I got that call, and it was fucking huge. And it was the most single surprising happy moment. Yeah, I wasn't surprised at my wedding, bro. We've been dating for fucking eight years before that. Shut the fuck up. Don't try to fucking. Um. Uh... Uh, where well, I forgot what I was doing. <laughs> you guys threw me off. You threw me off. Oh, it's those video. The unluckiest man on earth. Let's see. In car crashes, four broken ribs, broke my arm. What? What happened? Seven car crashes, four broken ribs, broke my arms. Four. Seven car crashes, <laughs> four broken ribs, broke my arms four times, different occasions. The 2006 Rocky Mountain train crash, I was on that. The balloon accident, the first case of unprompted scurvy in 100 years. What? Lost most of my bottom teeth on that one. What? And I've been caught in two house fires. <laughs> my name is Steven, and I am the unluckiest man on earth. <laughs> I had a mostly normal childhood. It's just in my teens, it was like a switch flipped. I remember my first car crash. I was 16, uh, okay. head-on collision. I was in the hospital for three weeks. The, the guy was drunk. He crossed the road and drove into a parking lot and hit me while I was parked. In <laughs> fact, five out of the seven crashes I've been in, I've been parked. And it's honestly gotten worse since I've gotten older. In recent years, my unluck has started to affect the people around me, people I love. Oh, my no. brother, who's an avid athlete, was out running one day and slipped and fell on a patch of ice into a bush and hit a needle that was filled with fentanyl. The doctors say it was statistically nearly impossible to have the veins be hit by the needle in such a perfect way, but, well, he's been in and out of rehab ever since. And since I'm the only family he has left, it's been quite tough. What happened to the rest of your family? Uh, the hot air balloon accident. It was a family reunion, aunts. Uncles, cousins, pets. <laughs> I'll never forget the screams we tried to put out the fire. You, they said I was lucky I missed it because I was picking up my brother from rehab, but I don't know. They also say that God gives its toughest battles to its strongest soldiers. Yeah. Sometimes it just doesn't feel like things go my way at all. Right. But people are now calling you the luckiest man alive. Can you Why tell is that? Us about that? To be honest, I don't think there was anything on earth that could balance out the hand I've been dealt, but I guess the universe somehow always finds a way uh, because three days ago I won. I won big. How? In fact, some may say I won bigger than big because I want a free ticket to the Big A Awards. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! His life is back on track! It's back on track! And it's a good ad too? Have they been paying attention? Oh, uh, Big A Awards this Saturday. Voting closes in the next two days. Get your votes in. BigAwards.live slash vote. Um, check it out. Vote. It, it, what's cool about it is I know as much or less than you. <laughs> I don't know anything about what's going to happen in these awards. They're 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 gonna like stream it to me on my channel, and I will be live uh, react. But I am not. I have no. I, I don't know what they spent the money on. I don't know anything. I don't know anything. But I do know that we are gonna have some awards, and I'm excited for you to see them. And you get to vote. Um. So there should be. Some, I heard there's yarn. I heard a lot of yarn has been purchased. Uh, what are you wearing to the awards? I am going to wear my nicest Jeff Winger flannel. That way you know I, I mean business. Uh, check that out. Pretty cool. Is there any other video I need to watch before we start? 
the marketing Monday. Lots of yarn, but one more. Okay, here it is. This is behind the scenes, planning the big A wards. <laughs> you are watching Aiden and Braden. But a -Track's watching House. <laughs> That's a chicken Amir. <laughs> oh, wait, stay here. Okay. Promotions for the big A awards, Braden. Shows in three days. You've been working on some stuff. Let's hear what you got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Number one, shoot the host with a gun. Um, sorry? Drive five hours to the middle of nowhere with a stranger you know barely and make a short film Scorsese would be proud to call his own. Uh, you've already done it and it was a terrible idea then. I don't think that's going to work. Number two, the content comes from you. What does that mean? Are you counting? If the streamer won't promote the vote, we mm -hmm. have to get out there and tell people to watch ourselves. Pull me up by my bootstraps and make some Reddit posts. Marketing Monday. How about marketing every day, okay? How much effort right. did you put into these? Are you reading? Did you write these down? Number three. Get away from me. This We're is hosting like only the show for together, Brayden. That's not going to work. Yo, got to get to the show three days early. That's what I know. Have you been rhyming in the responses the whole time? Number four. Lock the door. <laughs> What are you talking about? What what door? When you're there on the day and you're watching the show, you don't want anyone IRL to know. Turn off the lights and turn on True. the screen. It's time to watch with ads in between. True. Just a little pause. On Saturday, don't let your parents come in and see you watching the Big A Awards. Don't let your family. Don't just make sure that door is locked. <laughs> okay. You need. Then you gotta lock this down. Uh. I. What are you saying? I think we've completely lost the thread. I don't Roommates, know. Number yeah. five, go for a drive. Where did you get that? Ain't she a beaut? <laughs> yeah, so get in your car. Go real far. Maybe to Twitch or NVIDIA even. Show up to his house and say hi. Don't. I'm Steven. Don't do that. <laughs> uh, your name's Brayden, and please don't show up to anybody's don't, obviously house claiming don't do to that. be Steven. Number six. Don't do that. We want those clicks. <laughs> Is that an Xbox control? We don't. Nobody's watching this on their Xbox. My mental health may go down and spiral. I just want you guys to know that, like, I think I'm pretty chill <laughs> as a streamer that, like, some of our running jokes here are that we should shoot me with a gun and show up to my house. <laughs> Can I just say like that's I'm be I'm chill about that. Like I'm pretty cool that we're having this 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 running bit here. Uh, we're gonna go trending and viral. Mm -hmm. Next year we'll get a higher budget. All you gotta do is tune in and watch it. You okay, man? Do you want? Is there something you want to talk about here? Like <laughs> Number a, seven. <laughs> A heart named Kevin. That's right. We did it. We got Kevin Hart, man. He's probably got some friends. He can, he can connect us to Dwayne. No. Okay. We didn't. We didn't get Kevin. Hart, you guys got so Kevin Hart. That's that awesome. What? What if we start a cult? Yeah, that could work. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let me give you a tour. Wheels on the bus go round in New York. New York, you know you. When eat, you eat you your eat Smarties, you eat the red ones last. Scissors, okay. sizzle, scissors, <laughs> sizzle. That's good. That is good stuff. Unique New York. Um. All right, we'll check it out. Check it out. The uh, Big A Awards this Saturday. That was very funny. By um. Uh, the team. Uh. Uh, who's the guy with Braden? Braden and who? I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't want to thank them. Braden and, uh, and, uh, <laughs> what is it? What is the other guy's name? I got Aiden. Braden and Aiden, dude. <laughs> sorry. 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 My bad. My bad. My bad. My bad. Jake and Amir. Um, and Kevin Hart confirmed to be there. Kevin Hart confirmed to be there. Oh, Steven. <laughs> Braden and Steven. I'm sorry, Steven. All right. Okay. I met Braden IRL. I haven't met you yet. Okay. We're, we'll get there. Um, no. <laughs> What's Braden and Aiden? Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Okay. Um, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, uh, to dip your steak sauce in, um, uh, you guys always do the same thing every time I say that. <laughs> yeah. You never heard of? You never heard of this? Oh wait, I lost it. You never heard of this? You never? It was never. <laughs> you never heard of this? French dip? You never had a French dip sandwich? Uh. <laughs> 
Uh, it's good. It's tasty. Uh, we're going to get into Marketing Monday, which, but, you know, is a labor of mine, really, but it requires a small effort on your part. You know, the snowball rolls on its own, but you have to start pushing it down the hill to get it started. And all it does, it requires you to look at your screen, <laughs> analyze what you're seeing. And then when you see the part that matches you, you just say me. It's really that simple. You just say me, but it has to be the part that matches you. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's get to marketing Monday. Today, I wanna to talk to you about uh, one big topic and three simple letters. Uh, the big topic is big oil <laughs> and the three letters are E S G it stands for environmental social governance. And it's a pretty divisive set of letters. Everyone has a lot of interesting opinions on ESG, but, uh, let me give you some background. Let me understand what's going on, what ESG really is and what that means. Oh, it's, it's kind of cut off. Let me fix that. Uh, ESG, uh, it's hated by, by people on the left and the right for different reasons. Uh, but let's, so here's the background, okay? So um, the, the, the basic idea is that people want to invest in companies. Some people out there want to invest in companies that are doing things that are good for the environment or good for society or are you know uh, properly run. They're not, they're not pouring toxic waste in the rivers or whatever. You know, whatever, that's the idea. Some people wanna invest in those companies. That's the original idea of ESG, okay? And so over the past, let's say eight years, investors started pouring a lot of money into funds that were designed to put money in ESG stocks. Stocks that for some reason or other are categorized as beneficiary to environmental social governance, okay? So $142 billion in the fourth quarter of last year, 2.7 trillion across more than 5,900 ESG funds, okay? A lot, of, a lot of people all over the world, a lot of which are in Europe, want to invest in companies that are changing the world positively in these categories. Uh, again, much of the asset flow comes from regular people, retail investors. It's like people like, you know, random people off the street who have savings and when they want to invest for the future, they want to put it in companies that are also doing something good. That's the idea. Okay, but when there's that much money from regular people that is chasing something, the big Wall Street banks will step in to fill that demand. So JP Morgan Chase <laughs> um, realized a lot of people wanted to put their money in ESG stuff. Again, this is, this is a few years back. And so they started repurposing their old funds into ESG. They started making their own ESG funds that you could put your money into. Uh, here, here's, like, here's the example right there. This is JP Morgan's website where you can invest in all of these ESG funds and they make sure that they're best in class and they're thematic towards saving the environment and they have good impact. And if you have money, give it to JP Morgan and they're gonna put it towards ESG progress. Okay, that's the idea. Uh, on the other side of the globe, there's a company called Saudi Aramco. It is the largest oil company by revenue in the world. Uh, it's the largest company by revenue in the world, actually raw revenue. Um, and uh, they're like the state-sponsored Saudi oil company, okay? This is them now. As you can tell, they're not exactly very environmentally friendly. Uh, <laughs> in fact, not only do they pollute a lot, but they lie about how much they pollute. They consistently try to undercut and lie about how much they pollute, okay? So you'd think in the world that these two things would be ships in the night. <laughs> Never the twain shall meet. They're not gonna cross paths, right? Because this is a fund of regular people trusting a bank to put their money in towards environmental causes. And this is the world's largest oil company, right? But JP Morgan Chase noticed one thing. When you survey your customers who give you money to put into ESG funds, the number one thing they want is a high rate of return. <laughs> Basically, people say, hey, I'm gonna give you my money. I want that money to grow. Right below that, I want the money to go to good causes. <laughs> I want I want money back, but I also want to go to good causes. You have to do both, is basically what they're saying, okay? Which makes sense. You don't give it money to a fund to lose money. You want it to grow. So most important thing is it's gotta grow. Well, it turns out that 
investing in things that have high social impact and a high rate of return is possible, but it's hard, <laughs> okay? Solar companies, a lot of them lose money, go out of business. Wind companies, a lot of them lose money, go out of business. This, this is like, you're putting a lot of effort on JP Morgan Chase's part to find the right, to find the gems, to find the companies that are really gonna grow. It's a pain in the ass. You know what companies are always growing and always making lots of money and are easy to invest in? Saudi Aramco. <laughs> Oil and gas companies. Okay, Saudi Aramco has $161 billion profit recently. The largest ever recorded by an oil and gas firm. Uh, that's that's almost a sure bet, okay? Everything they drill, they sell. It's great. It's, it's a profit center. And so they do a little bit of trickery. Now, this looks pretty complicated. I simplified it. It's basically the uh, TF2 spy. <laughs> They do a little bit of trickery, and all of a sudden, Saudi Aramco has a subsidiary that only owns Saudi Aramco debt called Green Safe Pipelines. <laughs> but the only asset of Green Safe Pipelines is just <laughs> Saudi Aramco debt for new pipelines. So <laughs> it's essentially a shell company. But what's great is all this company does is own bonds of Saudi Aramco, so it has 0% emissions. <laughs> Green Safe Pipelines, which is a holding company that has no employees, <laughs> no carbon footprint. 0% emissions just owns pieces of paper that is debt for another company. And so suddenly you've managed to package up <laughs> a pretty nice little eco fund that is not so ecologically sustainable. And this allows people to invest in the ESG funds thinking they're doing something good, while at the same time basically funding Saudi Aramco to build a new pipeline, <laughs> but making good money in return so they're happy with it. And that is sort of the win-win for J.B. Morgan Chase. Uh, the only person that doesn't win is people that are actually concerned with the environment. They, they, <laughs> they are mad. So you'll notice everyone, the people that are that are unhappy here, uh, people that, that care about the environment, they're unhappy because it's not going to their cause. People that hate ESG because they think it's woke are also unhappy. The only ones that are actually happy are the people in the middle on Wall Street <laughs> who are playing both sides to make a lot of money, which is interesting. And that's a theme you might see come up a couple times. <laughs> might see come up a couple times. But I want to get to a larger topic of big oil, okay? Because I got to give them a big win. Big oil has realized that everybody wants their product, but nobody wants to want their product. They've realized they have what you might call a marketing problem. <laughs> when you spill 88,000 gallons of oil into the Gulf recently, people get mad at you and you're like, well, but they want the oil right? and they want me to get it to them. What do I do? It's a marketing problem. Uh, when they <laughs> have astonishingly high pollution in uh, global South countries, Okay, everyone doesn't want to see that, but they still want the oil. How do they get around this? And so Shell has figured out a solution, and this is their first big win. Gamers and influencers. <laughs> Gamers and influencers. This is how Shell is going to turn it all around. Forget trying to cut emissions. Forget trying to change their business. Let's get gamers and influencers to boost our image among the youth. They're hiring a full-time TikTok channel manager whose goal <laughs> in the description of the job is to make it one of the biggest and most active accounts on TikTok. That is an impossibility. <laughs> that job is an impossibility. Um, but they've already started. They found some influencers. I am Sage Erickson. Like surfer Sage Erickson. Performance Unbound. She has many um, environmentally friendly save the ocean type TikToks. And uh, for some reason took Shell's money for this ad where she says absolutely nothing about Shell. <laughs> to compete to go for the title at the U.S. Open of Surfing was the everlasting feeling of wanting to be better than I ever thought I was. I think when I was younger, I struggled with self-belief and what I was capable of. What's funny my... is I don't even super blame her because this absolute, this ad is such a waste of money on their part. 
She doesn't say one thing about Shell the whole time. They just gave her a bunch of money and then slapped her logo on this video. Uh, career became established. I grew stronger and stronger in my self-confidence. For me, having that competitive drive, it was so important to get a big It's stealing Shell's money. Because it would affirm uh, all that hard work I'd put in over the years. I always dreamed of being that strong female that was an amazing role model. To see myself in these shoes in that position was so affirming as a person. <laughs> I am Sage Erickson. I'm fueled by the ocean, and I am performance unbound. What does that have to do with Shell? <laughs> they just they just threw that logo on it. So some marketing guy at Shell can say there was views. Um, anyway, obviously that was only step one of their plan. Step two. You have to get the real gamers because the gamers run the internet now. And so they invented something even better. Ultimate road trips, Shell V Power Nitro in Fortnite. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Suddenly oil's cool, okay? Check this out. Oil is back, baby. <laughs> wow, that is awesome. Surely the youth no longer will care about emissions. Um, and I, I'm using Shell examples the most because they spend the most. Shell by far has jumped on this trend the most of spending on TikTok and Twitch um, to try and influence the young into believing that they are I don't know, cooler or, or better than they are. Um, Chevron, though, uh, had a pit stop at the last TwitchCon. <laughs> Relax, recharge, and get rewarded when you make a trip to the Chevron Desert Pit Shop. And you might be wondering why the hell that's there. And that's because they are trying, you know, as best as they can to turn their money into positive opinion among young people on the internet. I don't know how effective any of this was. <laughs> to me, this all feels like a big waste of money, but they have money to spend. Uh, I do other things that I oh. <laughs> I, I clearly start remembering. This is one of my favorite examples. I was looking at examples. One of my favorite examples. This is um, I believe Chevron is goes under a different name, um, in Asia, and this is their this is like their like Southeast Asia. It's like Philippines. This is their TikTok challenge where they um ask people to do a rap with one certain line about them in there and you could win prizes. This is the line. Let's see. Uh, see if you can see if you can spot the line that had to be included in this rap. I do other things that I like too. How much is hit up a drive through? Running through the city with my crew. If you want to ride that all right, cool. I soon as my tank hits the quarter unless I'm gonna hit up the station at Cal Tex. Pop in my beats in my pickup. Call that a bump on the road that's a hiccup. I'll be sitting with the chick around me. Feeling like a young like a freaking prodigy. I will never settle for a level that is lower than the level of the dribble. When my cutter hit the metal line, bro, bro. Get a lot of this unstoppable journey. I can give you a list. I ain't been out in a minute and now I'm in it to win it. And I'm gonna live to my limit again and again and again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, so uh, you just had to say, as soon as my tank hit three quarters or less, I'm going to go fill up at Caltex. And uh, yeah, that, and you can use the hashtag Caltex Unstoppable Star, and they could make some money here. This was uh, one of their attempts, and I think all of these attempts seem pretty cringy to me, but maybe it's working. Uh, but here's the larger problem. Again, this is, this is all over the summer and, and late last year they did this, this marketing campaign. Um, at first it's like, okay, they're not getting people to like them. Who cares? In the, the day you're making money. Nobody likes you. But now finally, the fact that, uh, the vast majority of young people hate the fossil fuel industry is finally catching up to them because they can't get employees. <laughs> Petroleum engineering graduates continue to decline and is now at such a low level that they cannot find engineers to join their jobs. People are, the, the era of high salaries is no longer enough. They're having a talent crisis where the money is just simply not enough because people are either worried about um, the environmental impact or that the jobs won't be around in 10, 20 years. So it's a bad industry to get into. So, so uh, young people are understandably nervous 
And so now this is sort of a moment of desperation. Now they actually need the talent. So this stuff won't cut it. They need to put their money in more concrete efforts. And that's why they're now doing $700 million to fund research at current universities. And then more interestingly, this old guy <laughs> is trying to create uh, his own university that is like <laughs> greenwashing the idea of being a petroleum engineer. It's like the university for uh, environmental sustainability engineering, but it's just rebranding the title of petroleum engineer <laughs> to like <laughs> sustainability resources. It's the same course with a different name so that somebody could join this job, but then tell all their friends they're a sustainability engineer at Chevron or something. <laughs> what a win! I love that all of their solutions involve like repackaging and rebranding and marketing rather than any actual change. That's awesome. Big dub. Speaking of a company going through some marketing times, let's talk uh, some bad marketing times. Let's talk about Boeing. <laughs> you may have seen this in the news, but one of the uh, Boeing planes had the door plug rip off during flight. <laughs> uh while people were in flight this thing ripped out and uh caused a bit of a scare caused a bit of a scare this is gone the stock did not respond well uh to this bit of news especially as uh inspections of other similar planes found other like loose bolts and things like that just bad quality control um but the question that i found interesting from social media and wall street bets was would it be considered insider trading if you were on the plane <laughs> while the door blows out <laughs> and everyone is screaming and you turn on your noise canceling headphones, ignore them, pull up your phone and load up on Boeing puts. <laughs> is that insider trading? You're inside the plane. The answer, interestingly, is no, it's not. <laughs> in fact, there is a, um, example in the trainings they'll give you by insider trading is that if a plane crashes in your backyard and you trade on that that's fine it's, it's, it's allowed it's not insider trading if you again if you go to chipotle and you eat a, a nasty meal you can trade on that that is time and place uh information that is that is that is fine it's 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 uh available so theoretically if you were to take a bunch of boeing flight or airline flights and one of them fails remember on the way down buy puts <laughs> at least your family will get some money um, but just to zoom out a little bit on the subject of Boeing, people are often asking what the hell's going on over there. And I saw a big spat on social media again, saying it was because of DEI. We have a lot of three word acronyms today. Um, diversity, um, what is diversity education and inclusion? I think is the idea. The idea is that they got, you know, non-white engineers, <laughs> equity, equity. Yeah, sorry equity and inclusion. They got non-white engineers and that's why they're they're failing. Um, and I think, uh, you know, if you look more into it, the failures at Boeing have been going on for a very long time. And again, it seems like the real culprit, if you go back to the beginning, is uh, <laughs> this 1997 merger where the company went from being ran by the engineers, where they had power and equity and stake and say, to being ran by Finance, the finance team and the people with ties to Wall Street. <laughs> once the once the financial uh, side of the company had full control, they started cutting cost, cutting quality control, uh, outsourcing, uh, and the quality steadily declined until we got today. Again, there's a great example that back in um, uh, the the first Boeing 787, um, they would have all of the heads of software engineering on the test flights. That means whenever the flights were like, there was like one where the, the flight, the plane started shaking while they were flying it and they fixed it while they were flying. If you are the head of software engineering and you're on the test flight, you're gonna make fucking sure that your team got it right. <laughs> Cause that's fucking skin in the game. That means you are included. Nowadays, they outsource it to $9 an hour engineers in Indonesia. <laughs> uh, it's completely outsourced to save money. Nobody from the executive staff is on the flight. So you understand the difference. You understand that like, that seems to be more of the problem than DEI. It just seems like, and again, much like my early example of ESG, there's people on both sides that are mad and the only people winning are the Wall Street guy in the middle 
who are, is walking all the way to the bank. So it's interesting. Um, but speaking of people that are not winning, and I have to give a fail here, a direct honest fail because people I know were impacted. Let's talk about Twitch. In the past week, an update all went up on the Twitch blog called A Difficult Update About Our Workforce. This is a direct blog from CEO Dan Clancy about how they're laying off 500 plus people, many of whom I knew and worked with when I was at Twitch. Uh, out of the blue, this is one third of the company, uh, right at the beginning of January. Um, and what was crazy is that these people found out they were being fired from this blog post. In fact, they found out about it from the leak of this blog post, but the day before. <laughs> and I was hearing from actual people that work at Twitch that everyone there was freaking out when this stuff leaked because they didn't know if they'd have a job. This is crazy. This is an, this is an awful way to let a third of your workforce know they're just gonna not be out of a job. The morale there has to be absolutely shit. I do give Dan Clancy credit for what he's done recently to improve streamer to company morale. For a long time, under the last CEO, streamers felt like they had no connection at all to the management of Twitch. Dan Clancy has helped close that. But I can't imagine, so he's improved morale among streamers, somewhat. He has not improved morale among employees of that company. That has gotta be insane. <laughs> It's got to be insanely bad morale there. Uh, I can only imagine what people are left there or going through. Uh, and I feel really bad for them. And I want to explain a little bit why this is going on from the outside. Because you might be thinking, Twitch seems to be doing fine. Why are they laying off a third of their company? Here's the deal. I talked with Jarvis about this. This is me and Jarvis talking about it earlier today. Let me explain what sort of I summarized in this in the article. The eye of Sauron, that is Amazon, looks at all the companies it owns with a burning gaze. <laughs> okay. Now, it's not actually uh, Jeff Bezos anymore, <laughs> but uh, they look upon all the companies they own with a burning gaze. And they want to see one of two things. Either there's massive user growth, and then you're allowed to have low profits. If Twitch was growing rapidly, and there was you know, millions more views every quarter, and everything was getting bigger, they're like, okay, we can figure out profitability later. You can lose money while you're growing. Or on the other side, if users were flat, but you were making more and more money per user, let's say people were using bits more or watching more ads or subscribing more. If, if you were getting revenue growth, that's great. That's fine. You don't have to grow as a company as long as you're making more money. Twitch is doing neither. <laughs> Twitch has flat users since 2021 and declining profits since 2021, which means, which means the eye of Amazon is heavily upon them because not only <laughs> is all of this down, again, this is look, this is Twitch's concurrent viewers in 2023, down from 2022, uh, which is barely than 21, um, COVID carried. Uh, and basically what I'm saying is my experience from working at Twitch uh, is that the management of Twitch didn't really understand their product and they got lucky twice. They won the lottery twice. First, when Ninja played Fortnite with Drake. <laughs> <laughs> when that happened, it massively boosted Twitch's numbers. Uh, and there was a huge Fortnite explosion and a lot of people got into Twitch and it caused a big ex Twitch explosion. This was not a product Twitch did. Twitch did not help set this up. They did not make something new for it. This just got lucky and this helped carry them for a whole year. And then right as that started to die, they got lucky again with a global pandemic that forced everyone into their homes to watch Twitch. <laughs> Okay, these two things have carried Twitch for the past four to five years now without them making any good products outside of maybe clips. <laughs> clips is like the last big Twitch feature that actually helped anything. And so all of this is finally catching up to them to the point where they have to figure out how are they gonna keep this site growing? Because really it just seems like unless they get lucky, this thing slowly trends down. Um. What will happen next? I don't know. But I can tell you that Dan Clancy and the team at Twitch, if they won't say it, but are kind of hoping someone starts coughing in China pretty soon. They are hoping something happens to turn their fortunes around because Amazon is getting more and more unhappy. Uh, uh, speaking of happiness, though, let's talk about a happy ending and give a win to Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods and Nike have parted ways after 27 years. 
And Nike gave a really nice going away post here. It was a hell of a round tiger. Um, this may not seem that interesting to you, but if you look at it, it is from a marketing POV. It is one of the single greatest brand athlete pairings of all time. Um, they created some of the best uh, combinations. I mean, they, 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 they promoted the sport of golf together <laughs> on a massive level. And Tiger Woods, who has a net worth of $1.1 billion, made over half of that just from Nike. Uh, $40 million over five years in 1996. Then they renewed for $100 million over five years in 2001. Then they renewed for $240 million over eight years in 2006. Then they renewed for $200 million over 10 years in 2014. He's been going back and forth with Nike for his entire career, 27 years, millions and millions and millions of dollars. And you'd think shoveling half a billion dollars at him wouldn't be worth it for Nike, but it absolutely was. <laughs> they profited even more than this. Uh, and it says both of them helped grow the sport, which is pretty cool. I looked over the long, long history of uh, Ty Tiger Woods and Nike commercials and decided this one was the best. <laughs> this one was the all-time great. It's extremely simple. It's a one-take, unbroken shot of Tiger Woods doing something that, like, no one else could do. <laughs> got it across. That ad crushed. It's got millions of views from back in 15 years ago. Um, and all of that helped, was incredibly beneficial for Nike Golf. But... It was what he did when he wasn't um, in ads that was even better for Nike. This is why you pay him all the time, not just for the commercials. Uh, this moment was probably worth more for them than anything they've ever paid for. <laughs> There's a good chance he doesn't get this inside the monitor as well. sucker for good marketing i love that so you know good for them it's sick uh congrats on 27 years i think the the rumor is that he's he's leaving nike to do his own thing tiger made or something to sell his own shit uh, as all influencers are doing now they're making their own products but it was a cool partnership while it lasted i think it's cool um but speaking of good marketing <laughs> let's go to the don draper down under you know what i'm saying because I've finally seen some good marketing out of our crazy friends in Australia. Didn't think it was possible. But I want to give the ad of the week to Australian Lamb for an ad that's got everybody talking on social media. Good morning, Bermatown. It's a beautiful day to be 60 to 78 years young. Here's another gold moldy. Your phone charge is on. The phone touch is on. Have a house. Lovely. The phone touch is on. <laughs> Careful, Seymour. Watch out for the generation gap. I wonder how they're going over there. Yeah, bloody Gen Zs. Just remember, we're the ones that invented your precious World Wide Web. Oh, Seymour! Oh, classic boomers, making the gap bigger. They'd understand if they just listened to us. Yeah, season one was better. <laughs> hey, do you think all this screen time is adversely affecting our social skills? Nah. Well, it could be worse. It could be in our early 30s. <sighs> Not the hey. whole back climbing! Well, millennials are still cool, right? Yeah. Morning. <laughs> so not slay. Are we saying slay now? Slay. If we say it, it's cool. Slay. Slay. <laughs> I just feel like no one pays attention to Gen X. We've got so much to say. I don't care what they do. Just not in my backyard. Hey, hey, in my backyard! This is their fault. Don't look at us. We're literally perfect. Typical young people. Everyone gets a trophy. We were kids. You bought us the trophy. Stop <laughs> gaslighting us. That's not what that means. Hands up. Cancel! <laughs> Is 
that lamb? Lamb. You know, when I was a kid, we'd have lamb egg. Lamb barbecue? Lit. <laughs> well, at least we can agree on something. Oh. The generation gap. It's closing. The lamb's getting closer. I'm addicted to my phone as well. Takeaway coffees could be hotter. It's OK. You spent 368 billion on submarines. <laughs> it was an impulse buy. Being a young person in Australia must be difficult. Being an old person must be pretty tricky too. Not as much. Probably. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, it's a barbecue for the ages. Who's that? Oh, it's John Howard. Oh. Who's that? <laughs> Good to have the country back together. We weren't ever that far apart, sweetheart. <laughs> anyway, as you can see, that ad's shareable. It's viral. It's funny. It's built for the internet. And it's cute. And you know what? It did really, really, really well. Got people talking. And so if you're the Australian lamb uh, marketing agency and you managed to get an ad that goes viral outside of Australia, you did something right. That's crazy. Because uh, no one should care about this product. I shouldn't be watching their ad. This should be playing on some TV. Um, so, uh, anyway, impressive. Good job. I give it a win. That's my marketing ad of the week. W. Um, but the real winners were not any generation at all. The real winners of this past week were the lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> the ones you guys like. The lawyers won this past week because we had a whole fuck ton. Sorry, pardon my language. Edit that out. A whole bunch of lawsuits, uh, including one of the largest AI lawsuits in history, as the New York Times openly accuses OpenAI of stealing all of their stories going back to the 1800s, basically like almost 200 years of stories, and using them as training data for what they're creating. And New York Times is one of the few organizations big enough, not a tech company, and getting ripped off by this that can actually put some muscle behind this lawsuit. So there's like a lot of um, hope that this lawsuit can actually uh, set some precedent because not many people have this, the resources to do this. And uh, they are suing OpenAI and Microsoft for billions of dollars as they have found concrete evidence that you could ask uh, the AI chatbot about uh, recent topics, and it will just literally take stuff verbatim from their articles. <laughs> uh, so it's like they got proof of that before they went to the lawsuit, and that's it's pretty impressive, and will be a tough thing for Microsoft and OpenAI to counter. We'll see how that goes. Uh, they have pretty solid legal team. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Generate verbatim excerpts from New York Times articles. Again, and the New York Times stuff is behind a paywall, which means OpenAI is... Stealing. <laughs> I mean, they're just stealing stuff that isn't even free. They're like taking stuff from behind a paywall and then making it verbatim available, which is like not allowed. I mean, that's like not uh, going to be possible. So we will see how the lawsuit goes, but it's interesting. It's a very precedent setting lawsuit that's going to, uh, again, last year was kind of the year of unregulated AI expansion, tons of new entrants and startups and businesses. Um, and people are reacting, companies are reacting quicker than they did to like streaming and other things like that. Companies are reacting pretty quick to try and figure out what this means for them and whether they're going to get disrupted, disrupted by it. So, interesting. Another big lawsuit was against Starbucks, who, which apparently is being called like a, like a gotcha company <laughs> with how, or like Chuck E. Cheese or whatever with how they rig the payments in their app so you can never get to zero. <laughs> the idea is that you can only add money to your Starbucks card in $10 increments but there is no way to buy anything that leaves you with like a balance that you can, <laughs> you can never get down to zero. You always have like some weird odd number of things left. And so if you're like, okay, I have seven bucks left. I want to buy something. Let's say I want to buy two bagels or whatever. Then, then I end up with negative 51 cents. So I have to add another $10. <laughs> Do you understand? Like, it's, it's just annoying. At the end of the day, you go down to like two bucks and forget about it. But if you want to get all of your money out, there's like no way to do it. There's no way to spend it all. And so while that's not a major deal in the grand scheme of things, it's kind of generally annoying to a lot of people. 
so many people that Starbucks has $900 million just sitting in fallow accounts. <laughs> Nine, that's, that's like a free loan from consumers to Starbucks of $900 million. <laughs> and so at the end of the day, it's added up to something where it's like people want that money back. Collectively, they want that money back. Um, and that's what this lawsuit is going to – we'll follow up on this. We don't know how it's going to go, but that is a major lawsuit this week. And then finally, uh, a lawsuit victory. There was a class action lawsuit against Apple – uh, because they had been slowing down or weakening the batteries of old phones so you buy the new phones. They were just doing that. <laughs> That's confirmed, and customers sued them and won in a class action. Um, and so they're sending out checks. If you are part of this battery gate lawsuit, you're going to get some sort of check uh, over battery, battery throttling. And this is just the beginning because it's looking like the United States is getting closer and closer to doing a sweeping full antitrust case against Apple for basically locking down every single thing they do into their own ecosystem. So it's like very hard to use like Apple earbuds on a, on a non-Apple phone. It's hard to use, you have to use Apple chargers, you have to use Apple dongles, you have to use Apple connections. If you have an Apple credit card account, you can never switch. Like anything you use, you have to, you're locked into one system. And so the United States is trying to break that up and make it more easy to have interoperability is the idea. Um, so you can use just one of the pieces you want instead of having to use all of them to, to compete, to have to use all of these in one ecosystem. Uh, interesting. That is a tech fail for Apple, but there is one person in the tech industry who had a big win this past week. <laughs> and that's my man, Mark Robot Zuckerberg, who posted unprompted during a time of difficult economic turmoil for the average person that he has a brand new ranch because he thought Wagyu beef wasn't good enough. <laughs> so he wanted to get even higher quality beef on his own ranch. So he's going to feed 10,000 pounds of macadamia nuts <laughs> to his own beef that he kills himself. <laughs> I thought this reaction was so funny. The absolute stones it must take to post I'm growing a macadamia orchard to feed my artisan Wagyu during an era of rising populism. It truly is an unparalleled flex. <laughs> it's so, it is so distant from what the average person could ever experience that it's almost like, all right, go off, King. I mean, that is a cooler flex than a fucking Ferrari or something, man. <laughs> he's, he's got his own fucking farm rant for beef. It's crazy. Um, a billionaire who may also have had a based week, Elon Musk, because a story dropped that he uses LSD, cocaine, ecstasy, mushrooms, and ketamine. <laughs> they interviewed board members at Tesla and SpaceX and employees that basically said it's an open secret that he uses all of these drugs. Um, they're afraid to talk about it uh, so they just say, in the article, it's really funny. They always say, like, has he been getting enough sleep? <laughs> and that's their hint. <laughs> they talk about him as, as being sleepy. <laughs> that's that's their, they, they, when, they're, when they're referring to each other or whether or not he's, like, out for the day because of drug use, it's because he's, he didn't get enough sleep. Anyway, um, we obviously knew he took a puff of weed every now and then, but I wasn't personally aware of the level of ketamine use that is at least alleged in this article. Uh, based on interviews with people that have worked with him. Um, all that being said, though, uh, <laughs> to me, it's not, how do I say this? It's funny, but I don't care. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, there's things to criticize Elon on, but he could he could easily be good at his job and do cat or LSD or cocaine. It's, it's not, a, it's, 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 I think it's hilarious, but it's not a problem. I don't think it's like something I would ever bash him over. So he didn't deny it. He said TMZ has higher standards than the Wall Street Journal. But he also said, uh, you know, if drugs did improve my productivity over time, I would definitely take them. <laughs> Which is like, you know, it's like, I didn't do it, but if I did, it'd be fine. You know what I'm saying? It's like, all right, we get it. Hypothetically, you know, it's not, it's not a big deal, bro. If you use the cat, it's fine. Um, but... What I would be more worried about, again, they talk about in this article, I think they kind of fear monger a bit in this article about how like, oh, well, it's against Tesla's policies. 
SpaceX policies on drug use. It's like, all right, bro, well, he's the CEO and he, the companies are growing. So what are you going to do? I think if you're an investor, the more thing you'd be worried about is that the stock has been flat to down for six months. And there was a video back in 2011, which is remarkably relevant now. Let's take a look at this. Although there's competitors now ramping up, and yeah. as you're familiar with BYD, which is also on the West Coast, I think they're ramping up production of their electric vehicles. Uh, Warren Buffett owns 10% stake in that. Uh, why do you laugh? BYD <laughs> is trying to compete. Why do you laugh? Have you seen their car? I have seen their car, yes. In fact, at the Berkshire Hathaway meeting, I saw their cars. Yeah. Well, they are on a different... They are on a di Tell me why you're laughing. Um, you don't see them at all as a competitor? No. Why is that? I mean, they offer a lower price point. I, I, don't, th I don't think they have a great product. Why is that? Um, I, I don't think it's, it's particularly attractive. The technology is, is not very strong. Um, and, and BYD as a company has pretty severe problems in their home turf in China. Right. Uh, so I, I think they, th their focus is and rightly should be on making sure they don't die in China. Okay. What about for you? He seemed very confident laughing at BYD in that interview. But unfortunately, 13 years later, Tesla was just passed by China's BYD as the world's biggest producer of electric vehicles. They did not die in China. And as of fourth quarter, 2023, uh, the Chinese driver finally sold more uh, uh, pure electric EVs than Tesla. Uh, this is the chart growth here. Um, and again, Tesla, uh, while this is not great for them to have the lost their world leadership position in electric vehicle sales is at least it's still a globally recognizable good brand that's selling many cars. Uh, the third place Volkswagen is just getting crushed here. <laughs> They're getting crushed. I mean, it is becoming China, Tesla, and nobody else for electric vehicles. Um, when, it, when it comes to uh, EVs. So anyway, Musk once laughed off BLID as a threat. Now the Chinese giant has taken Tesla's, Tesla's EV crown. And the real story of this has been uh, BYD's shockingly low prices. They were able to get um, relatively good cars at shockingly low prices. And so for consumers that want to adopt a cheap EV, they've been crushing. Again, you can see some of the BYD uh, lineup here. Uh, their lowest end model, $13,000. 13K for a functioning EV is crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. And the reason we don't have these in the United States uh, because again, nobody, oh, I'm sorry. Well, 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 well. Um, nobody can match BYD on price is because we have a tariff. We are very, very scared of having China get any foothold in the United States market. If you're in Europe, you'll see BYD cars floating around. If you're in South America, you'll see BYD cars floating around. If you're in Asia, you'll see BYD, BYD cars all over outside of China. They're exporting at a crazy rate. But in America, we don't allow it because we have a massive 25% tariff. That being said, the price differential is so great that these cars with a 25% tariff on top of them are still the cheapest car, the cheapest EVs available. <laughs> that is how much cheaper they can offer them, which is crazy. And if you look into it, the reason is that China, uh, unlike other countries, has allowed its EV companies to own the entire supply chain. BYD owns the the mines where they get the raw materials, they own the battery factories, they own the chip factories, they own every single step of the process, which means they can vertically integrate and keep the process low, which is a little bit spooky for competitors around the world. Um, I guess because the, the, bot the battery is the huge chunk of the price. Um, and so, because this tariff isn't enough to beat this level of, of price discount, <laughs> The United States is considering an even higher tariff. <laughs> We're going to add like 30, 35, 40% markup on any Chinese car that tries to sell in America. Now, there's a follow-up to this story that uh, I'll probably go into in the future where it looks like Chinese companies are maybe investing in Mexico to like do a loop around <laughs> to where it becomes a Mexican car and then can ship into America for free. So if you start seeing a spike in Mexican-made EVs, <laughs> Keep an eye out. If you start getting a cheap Mexican-made uh, electric vehicle, that might be a, a China loophole that's coming up in the future. Um, and the reason EVs have taken off so much more in China than in America is not only that they're cheap, 
but that there is a large Chinese government push to become the world leader in EVs. And they're basically like uh, hard pressuring the average citizen to not buy a regular uh, gasoline powered car. So in China, for example, in large cities, you cannot get a license plate without applying for one. And that's sort of a lottery system. <laughs> It's an auction slash lottery system. So you either have a lot of money or you get lucky to get a license plate to have a car. Um, and the odds of getting this license plate are very, because they don't want to overload the city with cars. And so uh, the odds of getting it are very low if you're buying a gas powered car. But, but again, there's 200,000 bidders for 10,000 license plates. Uh, you have a less than 6% win rate or you can buy it for 12K up front. So you either spend 12K extra to get your license plate or you win a 6% lottery. Not a good chance. But the license plate is free and you can skip the lottery if you buy an all electric vehicle. All of a sudden, instantly, everyone in Shanghai wants an EV. And if you want an EV, why not get the cheap one? So suddenly, bam, 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 they instantly jumpstarted their EV industry. Like overnight. <laughs> And now that's why China is currently producing more EVs than the rest of the world. It's an interesting plan. Um, and speaking of China, let's take a quick detour and talk about the most important story in China after this intro. <laughs> What is up, Beijing? There's only one story that matters right now in Beijing. And in fact, we should rename the segment, Oh Hey Taipei. <laughs> because really the story isn't in Beijing or China, it's in Taiwan. The elections are in three days. January 13th, Taiwan elects a new leader. And this is a very important election, which you may not understand, okay? There are three parties. The blue party, the green party, and the white slash turquoise party. Uh, I've heard it referred to as both. Uh, I'm going to give you a very quick primer, but the idea is that currently the green party is leading, and they are the ones that are kind of anti-China. They want Taiwan independence. They want to not really have friendly relations with China. They want to do their own thing. The blue party is like, hey, this is a stand down. Let's have peace and integration more with China. And then the white slash turquoise party is like, hey, the China question isn't really that important. <laughs> They're more like, let's talk about other things. Let's. Uh, we also have to govern. <laughs> this party is popular with the young people. Um, uh, so these are the three parties, and right now this is the current standings, but you'll see the margin of error shows that almost any party here could win. Um, it does seem to be between green and blue, but like these are swing votes that are really important, and this is popular with the young people. They don't also respond to surveys, so... It's tough. It's really tough to see who's going to win. But I will tell you one thing. China does not want the Green Party to win. <laughs> they openly warning that the current residential candidate for the... This is the current uh, leading party, by the way, uh, is dangerous. <laughs> uh, and they're hoping that the majority of Taiwanese people make the right choice. Warning of the extreme danger <laughs> that this leader winning would cause. They are basically saying this is a peace and war election. Which is pretty insane as the Green Party, again, is currently leading in the polls. Uh, and we're three days away. Um, they have been flying out hundreds of Taiwanese politicians to have cheap chips to China to hopefully influence them before the election. They have been doing tariff cut remove like the like economic coercion they have been floating spy balloons over taiwan they have been using some kind of like religion <laughs> as a weapon influence oh, did i lose did i lose chat my bad uh uh they they are extremely interested in the outcome of this election not going to the green party um 
And so, Stefik, our, our Marketing Monday researcher and uh, Chinese translator, uh, asked her friends and did some, some, some uh, digging on social media to see some of the opinions. And she's finding out that there are many overseas Taiwanese uh, citizens who are returning to Taiwan to cast their votes. The election is so pivotal, people are flying in from America and all over the world to go home and cast their vote to try and... Uh, <laughs> Try and be a part of this election, which is considered pretty pretty, pretty pivotal. Um, she's included some of these things. This is, a, this is a person who's voting for the white party. Um, basically saying, uh, you know, the green parties, uh, they don't want to vote for them. There's the green party that's saying, um, uh, if the CCP wasn't a threat to Taiwan, the DPP wouldn't know how to run an election, which is pretty funny. Basically saying that like... Um, the Green Party is what they're voting, but only like if if they didn't figure out the anti-China part, if like it wasn't the only thing that mattered, then they're not actually very good at governing, <laughs> which is interesting. Um, this is the uh, blue leaning guy who's basically saying like, uh, you know, he's a great candidate and people like him, uh, but the whole idea is that like we don't know who will win, we don't know, and it's three days away, and what happens will be extremely pivotal. If the Green Party wins, as they're predicted to. China's response could be very erratic. We do not know. Um, they are hoping, their outcome they're hoping for is the blue party wins and they can slowly like um, integrate Taiwan back into China without violence. It's like, that's their dream. <laughs> but if that's not the case, then I don't know what will happen. And I do know that, that this is one of the biggest coin flips for 2024. This election is going to have, I think, pivotal um impact on the future and so we'll keep watching it and i encourage you even if you're someone who doesn't normally follow um outside geopolitical news to keep an eye on this story because it could affect you and it could affect uh basically some of what happens the rest of the year uh we'll follow up but that is this week's marketing monday thank you for watching tune in every week for more marketing monday wins and fails thank you for watching we're gonna do a live coverage for sure i'm gonna get stefik and we're gonna see if we can do a live either video or stream on the 13th to see what happens i uh, hope you enjoyed i think those were all pretty interesting stories i actually um wanted to make videos about almost all those individual topics i think greenwashing is interesting i think esg and dei and the whole back and forth with wall street winning is interesting i think shell buying advertising on twitch is interesting i think twitch layoffs are i think it's all interesting so hopefully you enjoyed those stories and learned a thing or two about some of what's going on this first week of the year um, I'm going to swap into my freezer shirt because I'm fucking sweating. Um, and then we might watch a little House MD. Uh, if you don't mind. More Twitch layoffs? Yeah, there was 500 more. A third of the company was laid off today. Uh, so let me get my freezer shirt. Oh, and if you don't mind, if you enjoyed Marketing Monday and are interested in subscribing and supporting the channel, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to run an ad. If you don't want to subscribe, maybe you just want to watch an ad. It's all good. It all goes to this content and to paying the researchers like Stefik, who translates Chinese comments, and to Mingo, who helps um, find some of the topics. So I'm going to run a quick ad. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting. Appreciate it. Sincerely. I'm going to get my freezer shirt. Oh, shit. Wait, stick around for a battle report. I totally forgot. We have a battle report. <laughs> Holy shit, this is actually a stacked marketing Monday. We have a battle report. Stick around for after this ad break. And we're going to watch a Dr. Battle return of the battle report. Uh, to, to class... It's feeding time for Daddy Bezos. Sacrifice the poor and unsubscribe. While they watch their advertisements, we'll kill some time and pretend to care that they can't see this. God, they're suckers. They all forgot to sub again. Streamers need your money, so cough it up, cause they're our friends. 
It's so cool. Rent's not even that Shit. expensive. <laughs> Wait, it's actually that's chilly. not a financial <laughs> dream. It's actually a chilly shirt. There's no excuse for Whoa. not subscribing. Fraser shirt, baby. Which is a crime oh my much God. worse than murdering. Backwards. Still on an ad break. Stop the presses. Holy These fools boy. forgot to sub again. Streamers need your money. So cough it up because they're dude. our friends. Everybody can get five bucks. Okay. Just don't waste. All right. Uh, so here's the deal. Here's the tea. Um, is the freezer shirt becoming unironic? A hundred percent. I recommend it. <laughs> if you are hot, put it. Pop a shirt in the freezer. Pop a shirt in the freezer, then put that on later. It instantly cools your body. It feels great. You have to try it. <laughs> the shirt isn't damaged. It's just cold. Freezer shirt. It's it's fucking excellent. Uh, that psychopath behavior. Try it. I hated it. I I I yelled at the guy who suggested it, and then I tried it, and now I love it. Wet. Well, how is it wet? It's just cold. It's just a cold shirt. It's not wet. Uh, haters don't know. <laughs> haters don't know, bro. Freezer shirt's crazy. It still feels good. <laughs> uh, alternative solution: move to Canada. That's I would. <laughs> I would rather buy a hundred freezers and a thousand shirts. <laughs> I would rather. <laughs> Uh, I don't want to live in an igloo, bro. I just want a nice cold shirt. Hrock, you made me want to text my Taiwan friends and ask them how they're voting. You should show a little interest. I feel like a lot of Americans don't give one shit about any election happening anywhere else in the world. And I agree. Okay, who cares? America's the only one that matters. <laughs> but in this one specific case, I think it's actually so hyper relevant. Uh, I think it's really important. And I think, I mean... Obviously, the American election will be extremely important this year, but Taiwan is probably close number two in terms of like uh, political significance globally. Even I think it's going to be big. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, why do China want Taiwan so bad? That's a very, very uh, complicated question that goes back a very long time. Um, they want it for a variety of reasons, but. The reason the rest of the world cares that they don't have it is because they make all of the world's chips, not Lay's, microchips, okay? The chips in your computer, in your, in your NVIDIA GPU, in your PS5, in your car, all of that stuff, pretty much all of it is made in Taiwan. All the best stuff is made in Taiwan. TSMC is the world's largest semiconductor company. Uh, and so companies like NVIDIA might design the chips, but they're manufactured at TSMC. Apple gets their stuff manufactured at TSMC. And so if China were to control it, it would be um, strategically bad for the West. Um, but also, you know, Taiwanese citizens just, they have voted and they don't, they want to be independent. So uh, they're just a democratic country. Um, Joel, you Joelard, because Ari was here. I didn't see him. Uh, why don't we just force them to move the foundries? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> <Do you... laughs> sorry. Uh, you are one to militarily force a sovereign nation to move its foundries and people and technology and skill somewhere else when it's right next to your biggest geopolitical rival? Uh, uh, you, you don't think that might start World War Three? You think that might... <laughs> Uh, that is interesting. I'm sure China would have no problem with that. Mm. Hey, babe. Hello? Did you want to see some jollers? No. Or? Babe, I wanted to use that. Babe, I'm using I'm it. I'm thirsty. Hey, water. Oh, I did buy her that as a gift, and so then I stole it right back. <laughs> it was the bird mug. Oh, God. <laughs> Uh, but I'm, I'm just so thirsty, bro. It's not as close as you make it out to be. Green wins every single poll. I mean, I just showed you the poll. I said I said green is winning, but it's within the margin of error. 
And in fact, at one point, the blue and white parties teamed up and were leading against Green. But then their alliance broke up because they couldn't decide who would be president and who would be vice president. <laughs> Which is a really petty thing to ruin your fucking uh, uh, political alliance on. But we'll see. We'll see, man. We will see. It's a very, it's a very important and interesting election. Um, is there any questions or anything else I can ask about? I'm down to talk about whatever, but I do want to watch House MD here in the next four minutes. Um, if you ever get cold, would you try an oven shirt? <laughs> That's a great question. No, because that would light on fire. Oh, battle report. Yeah, 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 yeah. Battle report. Let's see. I have not seen this. I am quite nervous. He sent it to me uh, on Discord, maybe. Dr. Battle. So I asked him to investigate. If you guys know, recently, the uh, Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> I, wanted <to> pick, <laughs> I wanted to pick a really light subject to get Dr. Battle back into the speed of things. Okay? So Jeffrey Epstein's list, the list of people he associated with or whatever, was published. And it was like a fucking 800-page PDF. I don't know what the fuck's going on. I can't parse this shit. And so I asked the best researcher I know, Dr. Battle, <laughs> to look into it. I wanted to know what, just summarize it for me. What's going on with the Epstein list? And I'm sure he did all of the research and actually found out what the fuck's going on. <laughs> because I spent, uh, again, money on this. Uh, so let's see. It's starting off with me giggling on the side, which is not good. <laughs> uh, why would we salt the earth? You can't grow crops there. Hey, Dr. Battle, spend a little less time chatting and more time finishing the fucking battle report for tomorrow. No, it's, yeah, I, yeah, it's, it, here it is. This is so irrelevant. This is so irrelevant. Do not, do not, do not, do not openly taught green solution in your how to play Hit Parade. <laughs> yes. got to, wait a second. A little late. <laughs> Happy New Year to you, Atrioc, and to chat, and welcome to the Battle Report. Okay. I'm very excited to kick off this year of Battle Reports with a great one for you. I couldn't wait to see what Atrioc had in store for me. Uh-huh. Oh, cool. Don't do the this will be sound. easy to make funny. That's right. I'm going to be covering the reveal of Epstein's list. The worst thing to happen to lists since the naughty list. The worst thing to happen to lists since Schindler's List. No, 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 no. The worst thing to happen to lists since Magic the Gathering's reserved list. There we go. Me, I knew I we'd guess. get one. So anyway, Jeffrey Epstein's guest list has been... Battle report! Yep, 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 bro. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm doing. I don't know what you're yelling at me about. I'm doing the battle report right okay. now. Yeah. You, you know, you, you, you're DMing me. Delay, delay, delay. Battle report, bro. Delays? <laughs> when am I DMing you that I... Are you talking about when I was DMing you while I was at draft nights? That's a private conversation between us as I friends, did, not something you need to pull that. into our professional relationship with the Battle Report and Marketing Mondays. This feels like stalling. To be honest, Atuyak, I expected better from you. <laughs> but what did you expect from me? You assigned me Jeffrey Epstein's list? What do you expect me to do? Mock an actually rich, actually powerful man? Yeah. yeah, that's a great idea. I'll openly mock Jeffrey Epstein, and then him and all of his goons can come and take me away, and you'll never hear from me again. <laughs> wait, wait a second. He's I'm dead. getting some news. Ladies and gentlemen, I've just been informed. Jeffrey Epstein has passed. <laughs> what a strange coincidence. Jeffrey Epstein's list gets revealed, Atrock wants me to cover no, it, and that no, very same week, he passes so off. off. No, he died I didn't even know he was sick. Ago. He wasn't what sick! What a grim outcome <laughs> for a man that I really know nothing about. Let's take a look. What even is the deal with this list, anyway? Alright, let's... No, 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 don't Google it live, because we don't need to... <laughs> oh. Okay. 
Well, and yeah, fuck this guy. <laughs> Why you want me to do a eulogy on this white Marth I anyway, Atriox? Do I don't want to talk about this guy. Let's watch my Rocket League I comeback. Don't want you. So look, we're down 2-0, 45 seconds left. Not unheard of. I get the bounce off the wall, control a little bit, and, and a decent to flick to get it in the goal. Serious... I know there's better flicks out there, but you know what? That one's pretty alright for me. So now it's like, okay, this is way more reasonable. My teammate was not super helpful this whole game, but you know me. I'm coming in clutch. Also, I'm wearing the ghost skin, if you can't tell. <laughs> You can't be black like the ghost, so I have to go with a dark blue or a dark right. red, depending uh, on the team. But I'm trying to represent whatever I can. I see the, the ball get popped in the air, and I score it. No, I don't. Oh, how am I going to get out of this? I have 17 seconds to find a goal. But guess what? The, te the other team passes to me. Boom. In. Thank goodness Dr. Battle got that goal. Now we can safely go to overtime and just see who's going to be the last team to get a goal. I don't know why I delayed my kickoff there, but it yeah. ended up working out. Wait a second. Uh-huh. Are we lining this up? Yeah. Oh, good. he taps it over the other guy. We don't even have to go to overtime. As oh. long as I can prevent this Who kickoff goal, was on Jeffrey which Epstein's I almost list? don't. Who was on Jeffrey Dr. Battle wins. list? There's your battle report. <laughs> I've been oinking and calling for slop since at least 2004. Thank you to Dr. Battle for another edition of the Battle Report in 2024. Hope you all feel more informed about the world around you and the breaking news of the day. Jeffrey Epstein is indeed dead. Uh, without further ado, I am going to watch House MD. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <clears throat> oh, lordy, lordy, lord. Let me hit the lights. Um, let's see. Let's flash back, ladies and gentlemen. After that fun marketing Monday, let's flash back in time to the year eight. No, the, the month, April 5th, the year 2009. Uh, apparently there is a warning on this episode that it deals with suicide of some sort. Unfortunately, that is the case. Be careful before you go into it. Like all episodes, you should be careful if something, because he's going to say something <laughs> bad or weird. Okay. Deal with it. Uh, if you want to watch it, if you want to watch it, deal with it. If not, feel free not to watch. I totally understand them. Um, the, the month is April 5th. Uh, number one song is, oh, dude. Now we're finally in some real culture. In April 5th, 2009, the number one song was... 